Okay, guys. Um, last night I started the holes in the um, in the placket for the laces that I'm going to do. I only wanted to do I wanted to do as few as possible because I'm lazy, um, and I started this up too high, so that's not good. But I'm going to roll with it. Um, this is just my you know I'm just learning. Um, so how I did that is I took. I don't have an, I have a bead reader reamer somewhere, but I don't have an awl, like a leather working awl. So I took a large um, tapestry needle. Now this one isn't that blunt. It's actually kind of got a sharp tip. <clears throat> um, and I poked the initial hole with that. And then I took this um, I would say this is probably like a 3.5 millimeter or I don't think it's a four. I think it's between a three and a four millimeter double pointed needle. It doesn't have to be double pointed. And then I, I enlarged the hole with this. I actually made it wide. I actually pulled it all the way to the barrel of the needle here, the shaft of the needle. Um, I would show you, but I only have one hand. And then I sew thread kind of in a blanket stitch or I'm, I know there's like a specific, it's sort of like a, I don't I've been doing a blanket stitch, but maybe it's kind of like a buttonhole stitch or whatever, but you sew all around here to keep it open um, and to reinforce the hole. And I'm just using regular, the regular thread I've been sewing with. I, I could have used some embroidery. Sabrina, please stop crying. My dogs are in their crate because we have a storm expected and they're afraid and they run like they get terrified so they have to be created during a storm anyway the storms are coming so i'm going to finish these and then i'm going to try to deal with the collar and i really think i'm gonna have to make a very narrow like i really should have this is really small so that's a problem so i'm gonna have to definitely use fray check to reinforce that and I have to still figure out how big that's going to be. So once I get these holes sewn up, I will come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, as we go on, my messy desk is getting messier and messier. <laughs> All right, I finished the buttonholes, um, or the lace holes. And I've probably overkilled these um, the stitching around here and it was really hard to make it even. Um, so I, if I ever do these again, I'll probably get better the more I do them. What's interesting is they kind of, they look so minimal on the back side. So maybe I should be doing it opposite, but I kind of like the, I kind of like the, I mean, with a lace through it and stuff, I mean, I kind of like the way it looks. It's just, if they were neat, it would be better. All right. So, um, I tried this on the doll again and I, I feel like I, I need to, there's just too much bulk here in the, um, it's way more than I need. Um, so when I sew this up on the sides, I'm going to, I reduced everything by two centimeters on all four corners. I'm going to try to tighten these up and then I don't want to unpick the whole thing and re -sew because I do this by hand and I'm that lazy. Um, so I'm going to see if I can just, when I'm sewing up the sides of it, I can just continue and then have this, maybe then I can clip some of this um, seam allowance that I've created, that I'll have created. I'll just cut it away. We'll see how it looks. Um, the next thing I'm going to try to do though is the collar because it's easier to work with this while it's like open and flat. So I'm going to try to measure out the collar I'll have to make it double side, double the, so I'll have to have the width, the width go around here and it'll have to be two layers because I'm going to need to turn it inside out and I need to figure out how high I want the collar and how, like, you know, how wide. So that might take some experimentation. Once I get the collar attached, then I'm going to sew, then I'm going to hem the bottoms and 
put the shirt together and we'll see how it looks. I gotta also find some laces. I think I have some cotton thread, cotton yarn around here I can use or something. So wish me luck. I'll come back when I have um, figured out a collar. I guess how I'm gonna do it is I'm assuming that I'm going to, oh no, I just dropped my needle on the floor. I'm going to sew it around right sides together, then fold it over and then tuck a seam allowance and then sew it on the uh, on the inside of the shirt. Yeah, so we'll see how that turns out. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. All right, so I took a piece of scrap fabric and I folded it around the doll's neck in a you know, mock collar. And I decided that something that was about three centimeters tall, but like a centimeter and a half split would be okay. And then I took a piece of string and I, because my um, tape measure is too big. So I took a piece of um, thread, like uh, crochet cotton, and I wrapped it around the um, neck hole and then I cut that off and measured this and that came to about six centimeters. So um, then I added five millimeters of seam allowance on all sides and cut that out and free checked it and now I've basted it onto the shirt to um, hold it in place while I sew. Now I'm not actually sure that this is going to work because it's on a curve and I don't know if I should have made some kind of a curved collar. So we'll see when I sew it on here if it works or not. Um, and if once it's folded over, so I'm sewing right sides together first along this seam allowance here. And as you can see, I'm very, I'm going to have to like, I'm hand sewing all this. So I'm going to have to adjust when I get around this seam when I get around this, um, buttonhole and then I will fold it over, turn these under and then sew it on the inside to hide the raw edge. Um, this might not work and if it doesn't I'll have to take it off and then uh, get a curved pattern piece somehow. So, um, but it might be okay once it's actually like on the garment. So I'm going to do that and then I will let you know how it turned out. Okay guys, after a much fiddling, I got this um, collar on and I would have to say it was successful, um, but I wish I had made it a little bigger. It looks too much like, you know, um, a regular shirt collar than a large pirate one. And it was <clears throat> wicked tricky. Um, and I joined the, f I joined it together here with um, a ladder stitch. Um, I don't know if it would have been easier to sew up the sides and turn it inside out and then stick it on there. It probably would have been better, but it was really fiddly, so I don't know if that would have made it more difficult to get on. So, I was, I was not about to do this over, so, um, so, so, note that this does work, but if I'm ever going to make a pirate shirt again, make sure that you make it bigger, um, more overstated. Um, as you can see, it is like, it has some gathers because it didn't have any, um, it was very fiddly trying to sew this circle on a circle. Um, but I'm going to live with it now. I'm going to live with it and, um, just keep rolling with it. So the next thing I need to do is um, also this material isn't exactly a cotton. I think it's some kind of cotton blend. I don't think it's a hundred percent polyester or anything. So it's thick and it, it doesn't wrinkle very much. I mean, it's wrinkly a little bit, but it's also means it's like resistant to um, 
finger ironing, finger pressing and stuff like that. Um, that's okay. So this, this out, I've never made anything like this and I'm winging it without a pattern or, you know, um, it is what it is, right? So, uh, if I were to do this again, I would make this, I left too much ease because I didn't end up closing the back and because these fall way off her shoulders. It doesn't look like it's that much of a distance, but when it's on, it really does fall slope down. So I don't know. Um, and I would have not made these so deep. So I'm going to try to, so I'm going to hem up the bottom and then I'm going to try to sew up using these new lines and see if that works. And once I get all that sewn, we'll try it on the doll and see if it works. And then I can lace up the front and uh, take a break for tonight. And we'll get started on the skirt next, I think. So I'm tired of bodices. Okay, I'll be back after I've sent up the shirt and we'll see if it worked or if it I can even get it on the doll. All right, guys, apparently I recorded this without any sound somehow. I'm not even sure how that happened. So basically here is the bodice uh, or those pirate shirt all finished. Um, I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, as you can see, I added the cords and put some beads on there. And I'm going to have a lot of trouble keeping her in her stand in this clip. So I complain about that a lot. Um, yeah, so there I am trying to get her back in the stand. If anybody has some good ideas for like what good stands are for Barbie on Amazon or anything or AliExpress, let me know because I don't really have any stands and that one's a piece of garbage. So I don't think it's tall enough for her. And here I am struggling to get it off. So yeah, that's great. Um, Oh yeah, here I am struggling some more. And I'm trying again to put her back in. Alright, so as you can see, the bot the shirt is all finished. And for the most part, I think it turned out pretty decent for my first attempt, and it's going to work for the challenge. And I laced it up with some crochet uh, cotton thread, and I added some beads at the bottom. And once the collar is spread out, you can see that it turned out pretty decently. It's bigger um, when you lay it flat or as flat as that material will allow. It looks better. It looks less like a man's shirt, so that's good. So I was happy with that. And then you can see the details of the laces through the eyelets that I made there. And I have um, a barrel bead and then a Delica bead on the bottom to hold it. The silver bead is a Delica bead, size 11. Um, so that the beads would, so that the bigger barrel bead wouldn't fall off. And I added beads so that the, uh, strings would lay, lay longer. Now, apparently I was talking about how I did the sleeves and how by reducing the bulk of the sleeve, it did fit better and how much extra room I have in there. And I could have even gone a little bit shorter probably, but if I had gone shorter on the sleeve depth, then it would have been really hard to get her arms in that shirt. As it was, it was really difficult to get the shirt on. Um, doable, you know, I put it over her head with her arms up and then, uh, but because her arms are bent, if I think if I had left more, if I had like cut off more room there, it would have been even harder to get that shirt on her. And as it is, I don't mind how baggy they are, but, um, I, I think it turned out good. It's just, you know, and then here I was talking about how, again, the, so the idea of the elastic cuff worked, but it, it ended up not being as tight around her wrist as I would have liked. And I just couldn't, uh, it was too hard to deal with with one hand. And so if I was to make this shirt again, I probably would have tried to adjust the sleeve, uh, a little bit more. Probably I should have narrowed the, um, the sleeve cuff and uh, I could now that I know how to do eyelets I could try to do some kind of like cuff closing I don't know it's just I didn't want to bother with that so 
but there I am talking about how like wide, like how low the, um, the sleeve hem hangs off her shoulders. Um, in that I had calculated the perfect amount of ease for her hips. You can see how tight and tiny her, if I pull all of the fabric tight, look at how tiny her waist is. So it, I think if I was to make this shirt again, I was talking about here that I would maybe adjust things a little bit more. It might be worth it to do kind of a, um, an armhole, like a fitted armhole a little bit tighter in rather than the straight boxy style that was actually the one that they used for men's shirts back then. Um, if I wanted to make something a little more fitted at the top, but then keep it loose, if I would, ha if I made an arm side or an arm hole, that probably would have been better. But as it is, it kind of looks like she's wearing her boyfriend's shirt, like she was uh, captured by pirates and then rescued by a good dashing pirate, and then she was, you know, the captain, and she was wearing one of his shirts. That's that's my romantic pirate story, and I'm sticking with it. Um. So that's why it's not fitted to her. It's all big. He's got big, broad, muscular shoulders, and you know, she's wake. She's woken up in his cabin after a night of romance, wearing his shirt. Oh my! So, um, but yeah, overall, I think it turned out pretty good. I'm really happy with it for this challenge. Uh, it is not perfect, and I, you know, if I was to do it again, I would probably. Mm, maybe tailor it slightly more at the top around the armholes and I would definitely pick a different fabric one that is like um, a lighter cotton or a linen um, something that drapes a little bit better but I mean for this it's gonna look great and then I have the skirt I'm gonna be you know tucking it into a skirt with a with a sash or putting it over a skirt with a sash any way to cinch it in and it's going to be fine for the challenge. Uh, but yeah, so the things I would do over is different fabric, um, adjust the measurements slightly on the arms because I really messed those up. I made them too big, uh, but I would leave the, the bulk of the shirt and I'd make the collar just slightly bigger and yeah, but otherwise I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm really looking forward to um, the pirate challenge. I'm probably not going to record the skirt, but I will record the rest of uh, my making process, like with the vest and the accessories if I get to them. And I got to get going because we only have the 13th is the due date. So I guess I'll say goodbye and thanks for watching this long vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now.